Hello everybody, Andy here, and today we have some new rules for Kill Team, and how shall we say it's not Strike Force just yet, just yet. It's, uh, <laughs> it's narrative rules for White Dwarf. Look, it's White Dwarf rules and it wasn't a new team, we all knew it was going to be narrative, okay? But they're here, they're new rules, some people I do hear play narrative, so uh, thankfully, one of my patrons managed to send me on my Discord uh, a link to all of the pictures if you want to see them yourself. They are in my Discord, go check them out. Um, and let's just have a read of them and, and see whether or not they are worth your while playing. I've had a quick read. I think they're fun. I think if you play narrative, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and I guess I'll critique some things about it, but I mean, it's narrative. Who cares? Right? Just do whatever you want. Just make it up. That's narrative, baby. Yeah. Uh, of course, before we do that, I would like to say a very quick double hello to my subscribers only on that one. Uh, so if you don't want to double hello in the next video, like, subscribe, leave a comment right now. And I also have like some other cool stuff. As mentioned, I do have a patron. If you want to support me over there, please do. Hey, tomorrow, Strike Force Justin's coming out. I have like three videos up on Glass Half Dead already that you can go and see. Saturday, it's an unboxing and like initial impressions. Then Sunday, we have an actual like tactical review where I actually go over quite a few like just how to play the game sort of tactics, but then give specific examples with Strike Force Justium because I think it's a great beginner team. Uh, and then Monday, Hobby. Hobby to me is also kind of just like narrative, so pointless, but maybe people like that, I, I don't really know. Uh, and then if you really, really want to be gangster, go and check out my other channel, Full Scale Wargaming, where I very occasionally do battle reports, and sure enough, I've done one for Strike Force Justin, uh, which will release tomorrow at some point. Okay, let's take a look at what our narrative rules are. No, I've got to find it. Where is it? Here we go. So, <clears throat> elaborate deceptions. That's right, we have a... It's not a new way to play Kill Team. I, I, that, I think that's how they pitched it in like the White Dwarf article. It was five cards for one new way to play Kill Team. Uh, you could argue it is, I suppose. But uh, to me, the way this is written, it's not a new format. Because let me tell you, when I saw that, don't know, there was no reason for me to think this, but I was thinking, oh, awesome. They're finally going to give us either solo play or boss battles. Two things that I think are like home run hits for GW. I don't know why they haven't done them. Boss battles, absolutely, like, look. 40K just got a really cool update. It's awesome, and I still want to play it, and you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I will play it again soon, in fact. But one of the big negatives of Kill Team is that you can't play with your big toys, right? So it would be really cool if there was a way it could even be narrative, right? <laughs> a way to play with your big toys in Kill Team. So I really do want to see boss battles. And then solo play, because why not, right? Cool, so anyway, uh, there you go, you've seen that now. Let's go to the next one. This is just their, their usual introduction thing. So what it's really telling you here, because th this is the main page, a deception card. So as you begin the game, <clears throat> you have your little deck, strong word, but it's five cards. You have a deck of five deception cards. You can either have one for you and one for your opponent, or you can just share the same one. <clears throat> you draw two, you pick one of the two you want, you put one back in the deck, the other back in the deck, and then either and then your either your opponent then draws from the same deck, or your opponent's doing that independently of you. Um, and you get one of five deceptions. And then a deception, we'll look at what the cards, the rules are, actually are in a sec. Uh, however, I, I, and so they, they kind of say, just do that. You could just do that, you could just say, hey, play your game, but add in a deception card, essentially. Or, they give some really cool ideas here, which I actually really quite like. Um, <clears throat> so they're talking about the idea of using deception cards instead of as part of the main game, or in addition to, to I, I really like the first one. Uh, which is give out deception cards to underdogs. So those that are in, you know, whatever, the bottom 50% of your league, your campaign, your whatever, 
um, they get a bonus card, uh, a bonus deception card going into the game. Now, I'm a big fan of that. Um, if there are like weird little ways you can help either worse players or worse factions by just, hey, here's a, here's a little deception card for you. I think that's really good. Uh, so that's cool. Then they kind of say, these next three bullet points are, are kind of all just, well, one's just totally random. Like if you're stood on an objective um, on a five up, you get a deception card, which is cool. It's a little bit like, you know, a bonus for being on objectives, but then it's purely roll of the dice. But anyway, uh, the other two are kind of about, um, hey, uh, if somebody wins a game, you can give them a deception card as a reward. I hate that idea. Big not fan. Um, super snowball mechanic. Because as we are about to see, the actual deceptions are, some of them, really good. So it would be, I totally understand, right? If, if you were playing a solo campaign, then yes, shower yourself with rewards, of course. But you have to remember, the person that just won, probably the stronger player, you know, arguably, uh, and to then give them a buff on top of that, or the fact that they are probably the better player, or playing the better faction, whichever. Um, snowball mechanic, not my vibe, not my vibe. But anyway, uh, let's keep going. They then give us another mission. Um, yep, yeah, it, it, it's a mission. There you go. People get free dash actions and it officially has the deception cards. Ploy, uh, like, rule saying, yes, you use deception cards in this, which is cool. I'm surprised they didn't put the um, sentries keyword to say that you should use sentries as well. That's weird. Hmm. Anyway, uh, and then it's giving you another Spec Ops campaign. I'm going to be honest, I don't know enough about narrative to talk about these things. Anyway, let's finally look at the deception cards. So. Uh, seize the initiative. In the initiative phase, instead of rolling off to determine initiative, you select which player has the initiative. If both players can decide the initiative, roll off as normal. I mean, that's huge, right? Like, how many times in a game are you at, oh, I really need this initiative? The initiative roll is, is always, in any game, uh, where you're not able to take simultaneous turns or have, like, hidden orders or something like that, it's always so critical and clutch, so this is a huge, obvious, like, always pick this one, basically. Uh, we then get Fog of War. When an enemy operative would be activated, roll 1d6 until the end of the turning point. That operative cannot be activated or perform actions until it is the last enemy operative to be activated, or a number of enemy operatives have been activated equal to the result of the d6, whichever comes first. So that's also a good one. Um, that's just the same ability that uh, Phobos, Inca, no, Intercession? Incursors, infiltrators get. Uh, yeah, that is the infiltrator one, uh, which is cool, very useful. Uh, surprise, at the start of a friendly operative's activation, you can change its order. Nice. Uh, so obviously, this is primarily going to be used turn one, which is good. Yep, nothing, nothing more to say about that. We all know how good being able to swap your order is. Hero or zero, when an operative is activated, you can either add or subtract one from its APL. Super good. Um, very fun and fluffy and thematic. You know, just being able to say like, you know, whatever you'd call it, uh, whether it's your guy becoming uh, an ubermensch and going crazy, or whether it's like com static interference on an enemy, and you know, they've just finished planning out their two APL move, tap, whatever, and then suddenly you hit them with this and suddenly, they have to choose, are they shooting you or are they tapping the point, you get it. And then inspiration, uh, you can do one of the following, gain one CP, nice, or block the effects of your opponent's deception card, they must discard as normal, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, also, again, it's narrative, gotta couch everything I say in, it's narrative, but, do I like that? Do I like the idea that you can just, have a whole new way to play, but one of the cards is no, you don't don't play that way. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, who knows? Anyway, well there you go. That's it. Super quick. There's no need to belabor the point. It's narrative. 
It's great fun. Campaigns can be super cool. I have not played one. But that's my bad. And in fact, actually, very genuinely, um, I've written a script. It's not, it's not a campaign, but it's narrative. And I want to, to do it soon. Um, I've, I've codified my own boss battle theory. Um, and I also want to like show how one can play solo play. Those two things, they've been bubbling away in my mind for a while now. Um, and I want to kind of put them forwards to, to the community and show you what it could actually be like. Do boss battles work? Or are they kind of dumb, but like fun, fun dumb, dumb fun, but impossible to balance? Or, you know, can you actually get like, can you get better at the game with solo play? Or is solo play just to have fun and do weird wacky campaigns because your friends don't want to do it with you? Yeah. I've got things coming that are purely narrative. Can you believe it? Outrageous. Anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, I would, of course, like to give you a big double hello. Wow. Guys, if you made it to the end of the video, thanks so much for watching. Um, honestly, you know, a small niche channel like mine needs all the help it can get. And very genuinely, one of the biggest things you can do is just watch my channel. Watch the videos all the way to the end. <clears throat> Guys, I'm super hyped for Strike Force Justin coming out over the next three days. Uh, so jump into those channels videos, leave comments, that'd be awesome. Um, I, put a lot, I, I put a lot of work into those, a lot of, a lot of man hours, especially the battle report on full-scale wargaming, and um, yeah, that, that leak, that got me, that got me. Fair play, fair play. Needless to say, what you're going to see is just me giving my first impressions because that obviously, everything I did was recorded before that leak. Anyway. Stay gangster, everybody. Stay hydrated. Oh my god, it's so outrageously hot.